What's up guys, it is the Radman, and welcome to this random computer video, and I have no idea what it's going to be about, because it is a pre-recorded message, so I hope you guys enjoy no matter what kind of video it is. Welcome to my tutorial on what computer storage RAID is. So first of all, you need to know what RAID means, and RAID means redundant array of inexpensive disks. So pretty much any hard drive or solid state drive you can put in some sort of RAID. So we're going to go over RAID 0, 1, 10, 5, 6, 50, and 60. So at the beginning, we're going to start with RAID 0, which is one of the two most basic forms of RAID. So RAID 0, it basically stripes your data across two or more drives. And for RAID 0, you can have as many drives as you want, but it actually defies the meaning of redundant because what happens is every bit that in, um, your information is split between you can't recover if that hard drive fails. So basically what happens is between two drives you have each bit which is then transferred between each drive. So you gain much much faster performance in both reads and writes but the problem is half your data is put on each drive and if one of your drives fails all that data is lost. And even though only half of it is lost, because it's not straight down the middle where only, like um where you could recover full programs like on half your drive, it erases all of your data because all your data is split between evenly every other bit. So if you have a for example a hundred bit program which is extremely small, but it's an example. It would be first bit would go to the first one, second bit would go to the second one, first third one would go to this, and so on and so forth until all of them are filled. And if you had if you have more hard drives, then that bit will be spread out. If you have three, for example, it will be this one, then that, and then this, and then that, so on and so forth. Just keep on going. But it defies the meaning of redundant because again, if one of them fails, you lose all your data. But again, you do gain nearly twice as much performance in both reads and writes. So this is what you want to do if you have something maybe like a solid state drive for your boot, um, for your boot drive. If you want extreme speeds and you're very sure. But otherwise, if you want redundancy, then you'll go with something like RAID one, which is what I'm going to explain next. RAID one, it's much more expensive per uh, gigabyte or per byte but it gives you twice as much redundancy compared to RAID 0 well twice as much redundancy per drive so basically what happens is each bit of data is put on both drives so it copies itself pretty much like this so each hard drive gets the full amount of data. You might see a very, very slightly small read performance boosts, but not very much, and you will not gain any write performance boost because it's writing the full program or each bit on both drives, and it costs twice as much because, for example, if you have a one terabyte drive, you have to have another one terabyte drive, and only technically you gain storage of one terabyte instead of two like what you would normally get if you just have a standard configuration where you have two completely separate hard drives that aren't communicating it at all but this um, allows you to do is in case if one hard drive fails like if that one dies then this one will have all your storage and then you can rebuild on another hard drive such as if you what you do is you just replace this one with another one that's the same size and all the dates on here will go and transfer to that and then this all this stuff instead of going back to that because it's not even connected it will basically just go like this and go to that drive instead so that's why raid one is one of the most um, preferred redundant storage arrays because it is very simple it's fast Com compared to raid five or six or fifteen and sixty it's very redundant because if you lose a complete drive you still have a complete drive of your storage and then that can rebuild onto another one 
So that's basically why you'd want to go with a RAID 1 configuration if price isn't an issue because it does technically cost twice as much because you're getting you're buying two of the exact same drives but you're only getting the performance of the one drive. So that is RAID 1 and I'm going to explain RAID 10, 5, 6, and 50, and 60 in just one moment. Okay, so now I'm going to explain to you what RAID 10 is. Now there's also RAID 0 plus 1, but that is basically the opposite of this, which I am going to be explaining, obviously. So basically you need 4 drives, all the exact same thing, 1 terabyte, 2 terabyte, whatever, but they have to be the same drives, and you have to have 4 of them. And what happens is that two, you make two RAID 1s basically. So these two are in RAID 1, as you can see, and these two are in RAID 1. But the thing is, half the storage is put on each one. So what you can do is, so this has half the storage for, for example, A, and this is the A section, and this is the other half for section A. So this concludes one full section of all your data, okay? And we'll say this is section B, this contains the first half of B, and this contains the other half of B. But here's the thing. Basically, these two whoops, can stay in the, contain the same data as these two. I'll just put a line between here. The, the, these two contain the same data, these two contain the same data. So basically what you can do is you can lose one drive in each category and all your data will be saved because you still have the two other drives. Now it doesn't matter if like they're both considered like the first half like these two because it's all mixed up but that's basically what it is because this is a basic guide. So, pretend you lost these two drives, or these two drives, as long as you didn't lose these two, which are in the same RAID 1, you'll be fine. But then again, the only chance that you're, you're going to lose both at once, or all of them at once, is for something like a power surge, and you don't have any set of um, protection. Uh, protection, that's what she said. But, um, as long as they don't die in the same part of the braid zero, then you're going to be completely safe, basically. And the thing is, it's basically just as expensive technically as raid one, but at the speeds of raid zero. Just about. And now I'm going to go to raid five, which this is basically what it is. So you have at least three drives. You can have as many as you want. But then again, the slower the data transfer is going to be. So you have your three drives, and you only you pretend these are all in terabytes again. You get you buy three drives, but you get the storage of two. And the third one technically becomes a parity drive, although all the data, all the parity bits, are split between the th how however whatever the drives are. Technically, like what the basics are is that one drive dies and you can rebuild it basically so this one dies Let's see that's a really small one but you buy another and all the information that's on these will go onto this one and that becomes the parity drive again basically that's what happens but if, again if you lose two of your drives then you're screwed and this is more on the enterprise grade level because you need, unless if you want really slow speeds but good redundancy, you need a really good RAID controller like something by LSI or something, then you, you can achieve good speeds. Otherwise, they will be ridiculously slow because the um, data has to balance between all of them and it takes a while to transfer and plan it all out. So next, I'm going to go to RAID 6. Okay. And this is basically the same thing, but you have two parity drives. So you, b it requires at least four drives, and two of them become parity. So you can lose two of your drives, and you still get the other two. 
this isn't really nice if you have like if you only want the, a small amount of storage, but if you want like a very large server array or something that requires a lot of drives and a lot of redundancy, then you might want to go something like RAID 6 because you can lose two of your drives and all your data is saved and then if you lose them you just these rebuild them. So it's basically the whoops that goes over there. So it's basically the exact same thing as RAID 5 but with even more redundancy but the thing is you lose even more speed because it has to balance and split between all of them and then again this is also what you'd want with a high speed RAID controller again by LSI but that is the basics of RAID 5 and 6 so RAID 5 you can lose one drive and you're fine RAID 6 you can lose two drives and you're fine the next step up is RAID 50 and this requires at least six drives and it's basically RAID 5 on each side so you have your RAID 5 which is which I explained already so one of them is a parity the other two are fine are usable and then on this side one of them is a parity and the other two are usable and then between them is a RAID 0 so you gain extra speed and then you can lose this and that and then they can rebuild each other basically and then RAID 60 is the same thing again, but you can lose two drives on each side, and you still gain the added performance. So RAID 10, 50, and 60 are basically the exact same thing, but they are just at different speed, at different base RAID levels, between 1, 5, and 6. So. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on basics of RAID, and there's also one other type of RAID, but it's not really considered RAID, which I was playing to keep to the end. It's called a drive pool. I know that Windows, I believe two, Home Server 2003 had it. What it does is you could just take all your hard drives and throw them in this array, and it doesn't matter what size they are, what speeds they are, they don't have to be the same, they don't have to be, the same, be by the same maker or anything. All they do is they sit there and the um, data balance it like jumps between them. So all the data is at least on two drives at once. So if you lose a two terabyte hard drive, if you have two one terabytes off to the side, that are also in the same array, those two will hold all the same data that the two terabyte had, and then you throw, and then those will just kind of balance out with each other, and then you just keep throwing in hard drives. But the problem is because there's so many hard drives in there and that. Um, data is always jumping around it, your hard drives die a lot faster because they're always in use basically and I believe Windows um, 8 has it but I would never use Windows 8 unless I had a touch screen monitor so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more tech tutorials, games every, everything based on tech see ya